Hello there and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video I'll be answering a question from one of my viewers who supports my channel on patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. Ed would like to know, do I have any advice about setting up the Wacom Express Key remote for digital painting with Corel Painter? So let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that. Now if you're using a Wacom Cintiq 27, or possibly some of the newer Cintiqs, then your remote should be prepared. But if you need to pair it manually, that's really easy to do. Down on the bottom, there's a little switch. You want to switch it to turn it on. Make sure that it's been charged. You can charge it by plugging in a USB cable here into the top, and then you can just plug it into the USB port on your computer. If it's charged and it powers on, then you can hold down the switch for a few seconds until that blue light begins to blink. There we go, it's blinking, and then I'll simply move it near the device I want to pair it to, and in this case, I can just stick it to the side of the Cintiq there. Now it's going to be paired to that device. Next, I'm going to go to my Wacom tablet properties that can be found in the control panel. I'll click on Express Key Remote, Let's go ahead and select all other for the profile. And let's look at this first express key here on the remote. And that's set to a modifier of shift. So that would be this key here. And if I hold down that express key, that's going to turn on shift. And then if I paint, I'm painting in a straight line because that's what shift does in Corel Painter when you have the brush tool selected. I can hold shift again. I can draw a line like that. If I want a diagonal line, I can do that. I can let go of that express key and then I can just draw freeform. So now we know that our Express Key Remote is working and it's paired with our device. Now we can take a look at how to set it up and optimize it for digital painting in an application like Corel Painter. Now first let's talk a little bit about profiles because you can assign different profiles to your Express Key Remote. So all other is going to be basically all other profiles. So unless you've created a profile for a specific application, these Express Keys are going to work across all applications. So you can see I've added a profile here for Corel Painter 2017. I've added a profile for Adobe Illustrator and I could add profiles for any application. Now the purpose for this is because the shortcuts are different between different applications, and so if you want to be able to use this remote across many applications, you'll want to set up profiles for each. So I have a nice profile set up here for Corel Painter 2017. So I'll go ahead and jump over to that application, and I'll go ahead and readjust my windows so we can see both the Wacom Tablet properties and Corel Painter. So I have this set up based on the commands that I use most often and that I find the most helpful to have on the Express Key Remote. Some things are easier to click on, some things are easier to set up as shortcuts. And it's up to you to look at your workflow and determine what's going to work best for you. If it helps, go ahead and just write out a list on paper and write down every shortcut that you use on a regular basis, and then try to assign priority to them and group them together. That's essentially what I've done here. So what we're looking at now are the outer keys. So I have Shift, I have Alt, I have Control below that, and then I have Zoom to fit. So Shift, Alt, and Control are all modifiers. and You'll sometimes use shift to keep things from squishing or squashing, or you'll use it to draw straight lines like we looked at earlier. Alt is a modifier that might let you scale things from the center, or you could hold down alt to sample color while you're painting. Control is also a modifier that you might use sometimes. So having those all grouped together just makes sense, because they're all kind of the same modifier command. Sometimes they also get used together, so if they're next to each other, I can press them at the same time. Now, I kind of had an extra key down here, so I set that to zoom to fit. If I paint on my canvas here, and I zoom in really close, then I can hit zoom to fit, and that will automatically scale the canvas down to where it fits on the screen. Now moving on to the opposite side, we have tab. If we hit tab, we can show and hide our palettes. That's very handy. Now beneath that, I have a toggle that turns perspective guides on and off. So if I click on that, I can cycle between the different modes. It's very handy. And beneath that, I have perspective guide snapping. I can turn that on and off. So for example, right now it's on, and all of my lines are gonna lock into that perspective there but I can turn that off by clicking on this shortcut. And now I can draw a freeform. If I want to turn it back on, I'll just click with my remote. And now my guides are turned back on. Now it just makes sense to have these two shortcuts next to each other. This cycles through the different guide modes. This turns the snapping on and off. The remaining key on the bottom right turns touch on and off. So touch is on right now. I can zoom in and out. If I want to turn touch off, now it's inactive. Now let's move on to the inner keys here. I'll go ahead and click on the inner keys tab in my Wacom control panel. So here in the center we have pan, and if I hold down pan, that turns my cursor into a hand and then I can pan my page or drag it around. Beneath that I have a button to switch to the eraser, so I can quickly switch to the eraser. Now I have my perspective guides turned on, so I want to go ahead and use my shortcut to turn those off. And now I can erase freeform if I want to. If I want to switch back to the brush, I can just hit the button below that, and that switches me back to the brush tool. Now I can paint with the brush tool. If I want to go back to the eraser, I hit the key above that. Now I'm on the eraser. So really quickly, I can go to the eraser, I can go to the brush, I can go to the eraser, and back to the brush very quickly using this remote. 
So again, it just makes sense to have these two shortcuts next to each other, erasing and painting, and then I can also pan the view of my page. Now at the very bottom of the inner keys, I have straight line drawing mode, so I can turn that on. And now I can tap to make segmented lines like this. If I want to turn that mode off, then I just click on brush mode, which is the express key above that. And that puts me back into freeform drawing mode. So I can really quickly toggle from drawing freeform lines to straight lines. And again, it just makes sense to have these two shortcuts next to each other and to have all four of these grouped. Now let's move on to the ring keys. We'll click on that category. The ring keys are these keys here around the ring. I have this one here in the top left set to select all. If I click on that, that's going to put a selection around my entire canvas. Right next to that, we have clear and delete. And if I hit that, I can clear my entire canvas. So having those next to each other makes sense. I select all and then I delete. And so after you make a selection, it just stays active unless you deselect. So I've gone ahead and set this bottom key here to deselect. And now I've deselected that selection. Now you might be wondering, what about undo and redo? Well, to me, it makes sense to have undo going back and redo going forward. I'm going to draw and just make some marks. You can see I can undo each of those marks or I can bring them back. So again, it just makes sense logically to have undo and redo on the left and on the right. This is set up in a way that makes me comfortable when I'm working. You certainly don't have to choose these same settings in the same order, but what's important is that you use the principles I used here. You want to group things that are similar together. You want to think about what the most important shortcuts you use are and make those the most easily accessible. Some of the things I don't use that often, such as zooming into the canvas or turning touch on and off or selecting all and clearing, those are a little bit harder to reach compared to some of the things like panning and undo and redo, which are really easy to reach because I'm going to use them often. Now the last button is a button here in the center and you'll notice that the light changes every time I hit that button. If I click this button here, I toggle between the different modes and if I run my finger along the wheel, I can control things that way too. I can zoom in and out or I can change my brush size. Now I can program this ring here by going to the touch ring tab in the Wacom control panel. And you can see that mode one is auto scroll zoom, the next one is keystroke, and the next one is rotate. Now if you're wondering what keystroke is, keystroke is set to a custom keystroke. So one way is the right bracket and one way is the left bracket. And what that's going to do is increase the size of your brush incrementally at very small increments. And then the next option we have is for rotating the canvas. So if I run my finger along this dial, I can zoom in and out. I can rotate my canvas. So if you want, you can take note of all these settings that I've applied here for the touch ring and the express keys. You can simply just pause this video and look at what I've set these to. But I'll go ahead and go through some of these so you know how to set them. So I'm going to do that by setting up a new application. I'm going to click on the plus button here. Let's add Corel Painter 2018. You can add applications that are open already, or you can just browse for them. So now I've created a preset for Corel Painter 2018, and anytime I use Corel Painter 2018, I'll be able to control it with the remote with the specific settings that I'm going to choose here. So let's start with the outer keys. This top right one, we want to be Shift. Underneath that, we want that to be another modifier. We want that to be Alt. Below that, we want that to be yet another modifier, and that is Control. Beneath that, we want to change that to Zoom to Fit. We'll go to Keystroke. I'll hit Control and Zero on my keyboard, and I'll just name that Zoom to Fit. Now going to the opposite side, we have Keystroke Tab. Beneath that, we'll want to set that to Keystroke, and I'm going to set that to P, and that's a custom shortcut that I created in Corel Painter. So you can create your own custom shortcuts. So in Corel Painter, I made P the shortcut to toggle between the different perspective modes, and I'm setting my Wacom remote to P. We can just call that perspective guide modes or whatever we want. Beneath that, we want to add a keystroke. I want to go ahead and click on clear to clear out whatever's in there already. I'm going to hit shift P on my keyboard. I'll just call this perspective snap. And then beneath that, we want to turn touch on and off. And there's already a command for that here. We'll choose touch on off. Now let's move on to the inner keys. For this top inner key, I want this to be pan. So I'm going to set this to keystroke space bar. Beneath that, we're going to have the eraser, so I'll click on keystroke. We'll set that to N because in Corel Painter, the eraser is the N key. Beneath that, we want to set that to a keystroke for the brush, so that'll be B. And beneath that, we want straight line drawing mode. That's a keystroke of V. Now let's move on to the ring keys here. Let's go ahead and set the easy ones. Let's do undo and redo. So keystroke, control Z is undo. Now let's do redo on the opposite side. In Corel Painter, redo is control Y. And then let's do the top ring keys here. This one is going to be select all. So that's control A. And then next to that, we'll have clear. That'll be a keystroke of delete. In Corel Painter, I set this up as a custom keyboard shortcut. And then if we want to be able to deselect that active selection, we can do that with the bottom key here. So let's set that to keystroke control D. 
All right, so now all of the keys are set up for our Express Key Remote and Corel Painter 2018. You can feel free to add any other profiles you want to add by clicking on the plus here. You might want to have a different profile for Photoshop, for example. Or you might find that the keyboard shortcuts are similar across all the applications you use, and in that case, all other might work just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and test this in Corel Painter 2018 now. Let's start by holding Shift, and let's see if that works. And indeed, it does. Let's try panning our page. We can hold down this button, and we can pan. Let's try switching to our eraser, and we can erase. Let's switch to our brush with B. Let's switch to straight line drawing mode, and we can make points. We'll switch back to our brush to go back to freeform. Let's select all of that, and let's clear it. And then let's deselect our active selection. Now let's undo. Now let's redo. I'm going to pick a different color here and paint a little bit. If we want to hold Alt and sample this blue color, we can do that. Go back to the red by sampling that. We can go ahead and zoom in here, and then we can fit our canvas back to the screen. We can turn touch off or turn touch back on. We can use the tab key here to show and hide the palettes. We can turn our perspective guides on and off, and we can turn on perspective snapping. Now we're drawing just in these straight lines like so. We can turn it off, and then we can draw freeform again. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how to set up your Wacom Express Key remote for digital painting. Now that we've spent all this time customizing our remote, it would be a shame if we lost those settings. So we want to go ahead and back them up. I'm going to open the Wacom Desktop Center, and then I'm going to look under Backup Settings, and I'm going to click on Backup. And then I can go ahead and save this backup file, and that's going to save all of the settings that I programmed into the remote. That way, if I get a new computer or I have to reinstall my tablet, I don't lose all of those settings. If you ever need to restore your backup, you can click on Restore. And if you're worried that you've completely screwed up all the settings on your remote and you want to put it back to default, you can click on Reset Settings. If you're wondering what the battery level of your remote is, you can also see that here under My Devices. Mine's at 87% now. Now you saw me customize this for Corel Painter, but again, you could customize this for any application. And the cool thing about these remotes is you can pair up to five of these to your Cintiq, or your Mobile Studio, or your Intuos Pro, or they'll also work on non-Wacom devices as well. As long as your device can support a Bluetooth controller, then you can use this remote. So you could use this on something like a Surface Pro, for example. So there you go. Those are some tips for how to set up your Wacom Express Key remote. If you'd like to get your digital painting question answered, join me over at patreon.com slash Aaron Rutten. Make sure to like this video if you found this information helpful, and I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more videos for digital artists like you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.